terrorism in the US and abroad. The jihadist threat in the United States has turned out, as I say, largely to be homegrown terrorist. And the order will encourage precisely the resentments and fears and anxieties on the part of Muslims that fuel, in some cases, support for the ideology of the Islamic State or Al-Qaeda. And all the experts working on counterterrorism are appealed by the so-called Muslim ban because it's really damaging the counterterrorist policy abroad. We need the trust. We need to cooperate with Muslim people abroad and in the United States. So why? Why? This is what I explain in my books and my research. It's part of the securitization process. The construction of the others broadly defined as posing a threat. A threat, a socio-economic threat, a threat to national identity, a threat now to national security. It's a dominant narrative. It didn't start with Donald Trump. Actually, it started the mid-90s. So now what we are facing is just the culmination of a long-term process. And uh, this dominant narrative has been legitimized by a series of measures, border controls, suspicion towards some minorities, and so on. And this policy didn't work. It didn't work before the Bush administration. This policy didn't work during the Bush administration. They didn't work during the Obama administration. And now the, the Trump administration is doing more of the same with the same negative outcomes. So we will still have illegal immigrants. We will still have terrorist attack. I'm sorry to mention that, because it's much easier for ISIS to send an email to people in the United States who are self-radicalized online, and then to explain to them how to commit a terrorist attack. Thank you.